In a couple of my projects, I've needed this sort of endless background that you can see here. In the past, I made it way more complicated than it needed to be. So in this video, I want to show you the new way I've discovered to make it and how easy it can be. So let's go ahead and create a new scene and I'll walk you through every step on how to make this. Before we start anything, I should mention that you're going to need to use one of the render pipelines because we're going to be using Shader Graph. So if you don't already have something like the Universal Render Pipeline or the High Definition Render Pipeline, you can go to Package Manager under the Window menu up here and make sure this says Unity Registry and then we'll search for Universal Render Pipeline in my case. And down here where it says Remove, it should say Install for you. Now if you already have any materials created in your project, you're going to need to go to the Edit menu and under Rendering, materials, you'll want to convert all of the built-in materials to URP. There should be another option for you to convert all materials rather than just selected. And then one other thing you need to do is go to project settings and under graphics, you should have a render pipeline asset here. You can create one in your asset folder by going to create and then find rendering. And then you'll want to create one of these top two in our case, we're using 2D, so I'll do the URP asset with a 2D renderer, and it'll create both of these. Now I already have one, so I'm going to go ahead and delete those. But you'll click here and you can select whatever your asset is, and it should automatically create this global settings and assign it in here. Otherwise, you can just hit the new button. And there's one other package I'll be using. I'm going to be using Cinemachine just to make moving the camera around a little bit easier, but you don't have to use it. Same thing, you can go to Window, Package Manager, and search for Cinemachine, and just click the Install button, that'll be in the bottom right. So the first thing I want to do in this new scene is create our background object. So I'm going to right-click over in the hierarchy and create an empty object, and call it Background, and we're going to add a sprite renderer to it. So go ahead and hit Add Component, and you can search for a sprite renderer. And nothing's going to show up for now because we haven't assigned a sprite to it, you want the sprite to be whatever the texture you want for the background is. So I'm just going to use the same texture I have for the example. Now you can see we just have a plane with the texture on it. Before we get too much further, I want to go through a couple settings on your texture. When you import it, you need to go through and you change this texture type to two, the sprite 2D and UI. And then you'll want sprite mode to be single. And you want to make sure wrap mode is on repeat. Now the one other thing we're going to want to set up on our background is a way for it to follow the camera around. And I have a really easy script to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy it and we'll walk through it. So all it is, is we have a target that we want to follow, an offset, and then in the update function, we set the position to the target position plus that offset. And the offset is really important, and I can show you why really quick. If I were to tell the background to follow the camera, and then hit play, you can see that the background disappears. And why that's happening is because the background's being set to the exact position of the camera. So if we were to go out of 2D mode over here, and look, we can see that the plane is inside our camera. What we really want is for the background to have this offset on the Z-axis so we can actually see it. And it's going to act a little weird for now because I don't have a skybox at the moment. But if we close play mode, and we'll add a offset of about 10 on the z-axis. You'll see when I start it, it should just stay exactly in front of the camera like that. Now let's go ahead and set up our camera. The first thing I want to do is change it from perspective to orthographic, so it's more of a 2D view. And the size can stay about the same. That kind of acts like a zoom level, so if I make it 10, it's zoomed out more. I'm just going to leave it at 5 because it doesn't matter too much. 
And then the other thing I want to do is create a Cinemachine virtual camera. And this is just a way to control the camera. So first off, we don't want to aim at anything because we won't be doing any rotation of the camera. And we want something to look at. So let's create a camera target too. Now under the virtual camera, we can drag camera target into this follow field right here. So if I take this camera target and move it around, we can see the camera is going to follow it. And then if we do that in play mode, we should see that the background follows the camera around too. Now, one last thing we want to do is we want to make sure the background covers our entire camera. So you can just go into it and change the scale to something like 5 by 5, and it should be plenty. And you don't have to worry about the texture scaling. We're going to change that later, too. Now, to get our infinite background, we're going to have to create a shader. But before we do that, I want to talk a little bit about UVs. So let's hop over here, and I'm going to draw some terrible pictures for a little bit. So for example, let's say we have a cube, since it tends to be a pretty easy example for UV unwrapping. What the UV unwrap of a cube looks like, which you might remember from making cubes out of paper in school, is something like this. So you have all the different sides of the cube. So we can say this is side one, the top is two, maybe the back is three, and we have one, two, and three here. And you can see the similar seams. We'll mark them in a different color. So seam one and two here is this line here. And two and three is this one here. So we're just unwrapping whatever our 3D model is into a flat plane. And why we do that is so that we can take this and put it onto our texture, which is this 2D plane, basically. It's just a 2D image with whatever you want on it. So there's our texture. What we would do is we'd take our UV unwrap and then move it onto this image. And now, how your computer renders that is it takes each of the points. So say we have this point here. That's not a very good color choice. We have this point down here. That's going to be assigned some coordinate called a UV coordinate. Now the image itself starts down in the bottom. It typically starts in the bottom left corner at 0, 0. And it'll go up to 1, 1. What we want instead of this constant point right here is we want essentially for our unwrapped cube to move around on this texture. And we can accomplish that by using the world position of our object. So instead of using our UV coordinates, we're going to use world position plus whatever the UV coordinate would be. So this, any specific point here has some UV coordinate and some world coordinate. Hopefully once we start making the shader, it'll all make a little more sense. So let's go ahead and hop back over to Unity. And over in our assets folder, we're going to go ahead and hit create. And we'll look for a shader graph. And since I have universal render pipeline, it's under URP. It might be HDRP or lightweight render pipeline, I assume is LWRP. But we what we want to create is a sprite unlit shader graph. And we'll go ahead and call it infinite background. I'm going to put a 2 at the end of mine since I already have one. And we'll go ahead and double click it to open up the shader graph editor. I'm going to make it a bigger view too so it's a little easier to see. Actually, before I start that, there's one thing I want to mention about the UVs.
So in our case, we don't have a cube. We're essentially just putting the image onto a plane. So we will take our image again with our beautiful texture. And what we're doing is we're essentially putting a plane on top of that. I'm going to draw it over here so I can select it separately. So here's our background plane. And essentially what we're doing is as the plane moves, we're moving it around in the texture. So you can see the texture just stays in one place and the plane acts like a window that lets us see whatever the, the texture is behind it. So that's essentially what we want to accomplish. So that's why we're using the world position of this plane. So now let's go ahead and hop back to Unity again, and we can start making the shader. So in our case, we don't really care about this vertex part. That just changes displacement of your model a little bit, which we won't need to do at all. What we want is the fragment section, which essentially sets the color of your model at any point. So one of the simplest shaders you can make is one that just samples a texture and puts it on your model. So let's go ahead, if you hit space, you can get this create node menu. And I believe it's under input, texture, and you'll find sample texture 2D. Otherwise you can just search for it. And what we want to do is we take the RGBA and plug that into the base color. And you have to plug in the alpha separate if you have any transparency. So we'll plug in alpha there. And this is where you put whatever your texture is. So let's go ahead and hit save real quick, and we'll hop over to the scene view. And one thing to mention, when you have something like our background with a sprite renderer, this sprite we assign is looking for a very specific name in our shader. So if we go back to our shader, this is where we can create properties we can pass in. What that sprite renderer is looking for is a texture 2D with the name underscore main text. And more specifically, you can name this part pretty much whatever you want, as long as this reference is that underscore main text. So now we can drag this out into our graph and plug it in as our texture. And you can see here it's using the UVs. This UV0 is just the default UVs of whatever the model is. And UV, you can switch them and you can pass in some useful information with UVs, but we don't need to do any of that. So let's go ahead and hit save again real quick, and we'll go back to our scene view. And now there's one other thing you'll need to do. You'll see that here we have a material called Sprite, un Sprite Lit Default. What we want to do is create a material that uses our shader. So back over here in our assets folder, let's go ahead and hit create and find material. Uh, maybe let's try that again, create a material. There we go. And we'll call it infinite background. And I'm going to put a two at the end again. Now in this material, what you want to do is at the very top, you'll see the shader drop down menu. So you click on that and look for shader graphs and then find your shader we created. And just, that's our property we created, that main texture. So with that, what we can do is go back to our background and replace this sprite lit default material with our material. And you'll see that nothing really changes because we're basically doing the same thing with just without lighting. So we're taking this sprite that we assign and mapping it to our plane. So let's do something a little more exciting than that, which there's not a whole lot more left to do. What we need to do is change this UV mapping. And like I said, we want to use the world position. So if we go ahead and go to our create node menu again and type in position, we can get this position node and you can see it by default, it's set the world space. So go ahead and just drag that straight into there, hit save and go back to the scene. And you can see that it's starting to tile now. But what's even more interesting, if we grab our background, we can move it around and you can see the texture doesn't move when the background moves. So this is exactly what I was talking about as the background acting kind of like a window that lets us see the texture behind it. Essentially, this texture is just tiled infinitely throughout the world, and you just can't see it unless this plane is in front of it. And in fact, we can go ahead and hit play. And if we move this camera target around, you'll see it looks like we're just scrolling across the infinite background. You can't tell that it's 
moving at all. Now there's one more thing to add to it to give you a little bit more control. So let's go ahead and go back in our shader and we'll move this position node a little further away. Because what we want to do is we want to add in a multiply node. And the top is going to be that and the output will go in there. And that's just multiplying by two by, for now, so we don't really want that. But what we're going to do is create a new property that's a float. And let's call it the scale. Well, actually, it's not really a scale. It's kind of the inverse. We'll call it the tiling because it's telling us how many times our texture tiles. Let's go ahead and drag it in there, and we'll plug that into the bottom of the multiply node, which the order doesn't actually really matter. So what this does is it lets us set the scale of the texture on the background. And by default, we want it to be at least one. Um, but I called it tiling because it's the it's the opposite of what you would expect. If you set the scale to one, you would have a bigger texture than if it were at two. Essentially, at two, it tiles twice as many times. Let's go ahead and save it, and I can demonstrate that. If we hop over to the scene again, we can select our background material, and here you can see your tire tiling variable. If we set it to 0.1, it's pretty big, and as we increase that value, it starts to tile more. So let's go ahead, let's set it at like 0.5, that seems reasonable. And it should still work exactly the same as it did. You can move the camera around and it just looks like you're moving across the background. So that's all there is to creating that background. It's actually really easy to do. So if you like this video, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and thanks for watching.